pack of Avalon cigarettes, please. Yes, sir. Oh, just a moment, sir. Don't forget your change. You'd never guess, but Avalon's cost you less. So why not always travel on with Avalon? Good evening, friends. Good evening. This is Del King saying welcome to Avalon Time with Red Foley, Jeanette, Edna Stilwell, the Avalon Chorus, Bob Strong and his orchestra, and the only man in radio who gives pep talks to chickens on how to lay bigger and better eggs, Red Skelton. Thank you very much, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Say, Dell, what happened to your right eyebrow? <laughs> well, I went in the barber shop downstairs to get my mustache trimmed, and the barber was nearsighted. <laughs> what a barber. He'll tell you you got a complexion like a peach and then start slicing you. <laughs> I feel great tonight. I just got back from New York. I flew in. The, the trip was a little rough, though. In fact, it was so rough, I was scared green. <laughs> I was so green when I got off the plane, a guy came over, opened my mouth, and tried to mail a letter in it. <laughs> I had a lot of fun. I went to the World Fair while I was in New York. The, uh, went out in one of those taxi cabs. I like to ride in taxis. <laughs> they bang up the fenders. It gives you that carefree feeling. <laughs> those drivers are awful careful in New York, though. They only drive in the safety zones. The... <laughs> but the World's Fair is really beautiful there. No kidding. There's so many Klieg lights that the astronomers claim that the man in the moon is wearing sunglasses. Mm. The first thing when you reach the fairground is the Trilon and Perisphere. You know that big spike in the ball? <laughs> Looks like Slim Somerville and Kate Smith standing together on a sofa. <laughs> Grover Whalen sets on top of the Perisphere half the time. He wants the people to think he's got a lot on the ball. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> Really much. That Grover Wayman, no kidding. He's really out to make money. I was wearing a blue plaid sport coat, green pants, an orange beret, and I went to sleep in the in the waiting room. And when I woke up, Grover Wayman was charging a dime to see me. <laughs> I, w- <laughs> I went to the flea circus, and I must have gotten too close to the performers because what happened to me shouldn't happen to a dog. <laughs> I went over to Billy Rose's water carnival. Oh, that's really lovely. I was sitting right in the front row with a lot of important people, and everybody was getting wet. The district attorney of New York's son was right next to me. Even he was a little dewy. Uh, Had a lot of fun, though, really. Everybody in New York has that World's Fair hospitality. When I got off of the plane, seven hotel managers ran up and offered to carry my wallet. (laughs) Well, I think I've been out here long enough, so I'll step aside and let Red Foley start swinging down the old orchard lane. Swing it, fellas, it's all yours. Swinging down the old orchard lane Listening to the mockingbirds refrain Strolling sort of lazy With thoughts that seem so hazy Between my toes a daisy Kissed by the softest rain Honeysuckle sweet fill the air Spreading real contentment everywhere a heart as light as moonbeams, a mind that's filled with dreams, swinging down the old orchard lane. I've traveled all around the world, I've known a million thrills. I've known the hidden beauties of the valleys and the hills, the seven wonders of the world filled me with ecstasy of all the thrills I most enjoy. This was the thrill for me. Swinging down the old orchard lane, listening to the mockingbirds refrain. 
A heart as light as moonbeams A mind that's filled with dreams Swinging down the old orchard lane Friends, do you know why certain people or certain products stand apart ahead of all the others? Because they have a certain extra something the others can't match. Now, in the cigarette field, Avalons have a perfect combination that puts them at the top. Highest quality, exceptional economy. Now, let's take first the quality. Avalons are blended to perfection with the world's finest Turkish and domestic tobaccos. You couldn't get finer quality tobaccos, regardless of price, regardless of brand. Now, second, the economy. Avalons cost three to five cents less per pack than other popular-priced cigarettes. Now, that repeated saving will net you many extra dollars every year. So just remember these two important Avalon advantages. Superior quality, outstanding economy. Try a pack tonight. You'd never guess they cost you less. and the boys playing and the angels sing. Yeah, that's the way it sounds when the angels sing. Heaven can wait. <laughs> hey, listen, Skelton, don't forget, you know, it's Edna Stilwell's birthday and she's oh. invited us over to a party. It's oh, a party for Edna. Can I go too? Yeah, you can go too. <clears throat> <laughs> Come on, Bill, the car's parked outside. We'll drive over. Oh, no, let's walk over. It makes me nervous the way you go around those curves. Yeah? Why yeah. don't you do what I do when I come to a curve? Just close your eyes. Come on, Del. Okay. Okay. There's my car. Is that the car? Yeah. It's all the furniture in the back seat. I carry that with me in case I get a flat, I can move in. <laughs> well, I think I'll walk over. Oh, come on. Let's ride. We got the car. We may well use it. May as well use yeah. <laughs> it. <laughs> we may as well use it. Come on, get in. Okay, I will. Wait a minute. I'll, well, I'll, I'll just sit right down yeah, here. Oh! What's the matter, Dale? Oh, thanks. Gee, I've been looking for that oil can for three weeks. <laughs> well, 
Hold on now. Here we go. I hope we get there in time. Okay. Oh, here we are. Boy, that's the quickest I ever crossed the street. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, wait till I get my goggles and my duster off. We'll go in and join the party. <laughs> okay. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, look at the pretty flowers yeah. out here. Knock I think I'll pick some comes. Oh, hello, boys. Come on in. Well, happy birthday, Edna. Happy birthday. You didn't eat yet, did you? <laughs> no, but we've started to play games. Yeah? You should have been here a few minutes ago. What happened? My aunt was bobbing for apples. Somebody slapped her on the back and she swallowed the tub. <laughs> Oh, uh, I almost forgot, Edna. Here's a little present for you. It's a pair of the latest style stockings with pockets in the tops. Oh, thanks, Dale. But I'm sure gonna look funny standing around with my hands in my pockets. <laughs> Here, I brought you a little present, too, Edna. Oh, it's a lovely ring. Oh, it's nothing. Oh, it's beautiful. Oh, it's... So what's that hole in the middle? Huh? What's the hole for? You can have a stone put in there if you want to. <laughs> I don't believe it, but that ring used to belong to a millionaire. Yeah, I know. Woolworth. Yeah. <laughs> now, come on. Let's go in and play some games. Let's, have, let's play the kissing game. Uh-oh. There's Bob Strong. Hi, Skelton. Hello, Romeo. <laughs> hey, you... Hadn't have been kissing you? Look, you got rouge on your cheek. No, I'm just naturally healthy. Oh, just naturally healthy. Uh, <laughs> don't look now. Your right cheek's healthier than the left one. <laughs> Don't be so jealous, Skelton. I don't mind when you kiss my girl. What do you mean? I never kissed your girl. But you must have. I showed her your picture, and she said, Boy, what a kisser. Oh. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know what Edna sees in you. Well, for one thing, he's a wonderful musician. Well, so what? Didn't I used to play an organ? Yeah, too bad your monkey died. Yeah. <laughs> Hercules, the messenger boy. Well, I ain't a carrier pigeon. <laughs> and goodness me, Mr. Skelton, the customers have just got me all a sweater. Yeah. What, what seems to be the trouble, Herky? Well, good heavens. They expect me to have a horse and a suit of armor to deliver a night letter. <laughs> Here's two telegrams for you, Miss Stillwell. Oh, thank you, Herky. You're welcome. Oh, look. This one says, congratulations on your 24th birthday. Many happy returns of... Signed, Red Skelton. Yeah, my ten words ran out. <laughs> well, thanks anyway. Oh. Imagine you sending me a telegram. Oh. Yes, and imagine him sending it collect, the old thing. <laughs> Would you like to stick around, Herky? Well, what are you going to do? Well, we're getting ready to play kissing games. Oh, good heavens, no. <laughs> I was at a party last night, and I haven't been kissed so much since I was just one of those teen old babies. <laughs> What happened to Herky? He kissed the girl, fainted, and fell down a flight of stairs. Well, listen, Mr. Skelton. When I kiss him, I stay kissed. <laughs> My goodness. Did I wake up this morning with a terrible headache? Well, no wonder, Herky. You kept mixing your drinks. Root beer right on top of sarsaparilla. <laughs> oh, no, he didn't. Yes, I did. And along toward the end, I was tossing off... Right, ginger ale. <laughs> well, I gotta go now, Mr. Skelton. I gotta wash out my cowboy underwear. Uh, cowboy underwear? What's that? My Western Union suit. So I'll... <laughs> Say, Edna, you forgot to read your other telegram. I'll open it. Oh, look, it's from Kansas City, Missouri. Why, that's my hometown. Yeah, remember that hawk shop you used to live over? Yeah, and you used to live under it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, remember how you used to come over to my house and whistle for the dog? And you used to come running out? <laughs> yeah, I wish everybody had stopped picking on me. Skelton, everybody's plaything. That's what I am. <laughs> Here, I'll read the telegram. Says, congratulations on your birthday and my best wishes for your continued success in radio. 
It is always gratifying to know that another Missouri girl has made good and it's signed Bryce B. Smith, Mayor of Kansas City, Missouri. Well... Well, thank you very, very much for the greatest thrill I'm sure I ever had. Uh, it's all right, that wasn't in there, but it was very well done. Very well done. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Maybe we should continue on now. Oh, look what Polly's coming in with, a big birthday cake. Hello, Edna. Uh, this is a little present from me to you. Uh, by the way, have you got a charge account at Henrici's Bakery? No, I haven't. Well, you have now. <laughs> Hey, Foley, you pulled that crack on me once. Yeah? Well, I got that one crack mind. Yeah. <laughs> Say, that ain't bad. You know, it seems lately I got jokes in my blood. Yeah? You're a little anemic, ain't you? <laughs> well, come on, let's light up the candles on the birthday cake. Okay, here we go. Oh, oh my beautiful cake. Gee. Who put those firecrackers on there for candles? Well, I did, but I didn't think you'd get sore about it. Gee, I only wanted to make sure that your birthday party would go off with a bang. <laughs> this year, songwriters are making brand new hits by rewriting songs of long ago. Here's Jeanette with the very latest, a revised version of Park Avenue Fantasy with a glamorous new title, Stairway to the Stars. Jeanette? <laughs> product is sold on merit and merit alone, can the manufacturer say, try it once and let it prove its superiority. Well, that's a funny thing because that's exactly what we say about Avalon cigarettes. Give them just one trial and they'll prove that the perfect Avalon blend of Turkish and domestic tobaccos is unsurpassed in quality. And still, Avalons cost three to five cents less per pack than other popular price brands. Now, is it any wonder they're known throughout the entire nation as the outstanding cigarette value on the market today? Highest quality at a worthwhile saving. Avalon certainly deserve a trial. Why not pick up a pack tonight? Good 
Red Foley and the Avalon Chorus sing one of Nick Kenny's big hits, It's a Lonely Trail. Standing at the crossroads, don't know where to travel. Roads of rock and gravel don't lead me anywhere. Just the smoothest highway somehow isn't my way. And nobody seems to care. It's a lonely trail when you're traveling all alone. It's a lonely trail when you're just a rolling stone. With a lonely star to guide you And a lonely heart inside you Like a ship without a port To call your own It's a lonely trail When you haven't got a friend And the road before you never seems to end. Seems to end. But I wouldn't mind life's trouble if I could only travel double. It's a lonely trail when you're traveling all alone. Very good. And now for one of our Gaga sagas. Yes. Tonight, I'm going to play the part of my much-married ancestor, King Henry VIII Skelton. Now, Edna Stilwell will play the part of uh, Catherine Howard, my fifth wife, and playing the role of Earl of Essex will be that noted English actor, John Goldworthy, who has been on Broadway for the past three years, looking for work. He... <laughs> now, we've uh, imported Mr. Goldworthy for this part. Set the scene, will you, Dale? Okay, Red. The time, May 27, 1539. The place, the Royal Palace in London. As the scene opens, we find King Henry and his wife, Catherine Howard, in the banquet hall, awaiting the return of the Earl of Essex from the Scottish War. The Earl is late, and the King is hungry. Food! Bring me food, do you hear me? Where are you scullery knaves? Bring me food! What do you wish, sire? Can I have a piece of bread and butter? I mean... <laughs> Bring me a leg of lamb, a peck of potatoes, a half a dozen heads of cabbage, two loaves of bread, a bag of pudding and a gallon of wine. Yes, sir. Anything else? Now then, you can bring my dinner. <laughs> Very good, sir. Oh, I forgot to tell you. What? The Duke of Norfolk and the Duke of Suffolk want to sleep here tonight. He can't. No wonder people think I like to fight. I'm always putting up my dukes. <laughs> now fetch me. Not there. <laughs> Fetch me some vittles to warm my innards. I'm a growing boy and I need a lot of food. You stopped growing long ago, all but your stomach. Yeah. Catherine Howard, the size of my stomach is my business. Business? Yeah. That's a corporation. You said it. Ah, <laughs> uh, but it's good to see you again, Henry. Yeah? Tell me, Kate, while I was in France, were you true to me? Well, let's see. What day did you leave? The... <laughs> ah, you're just like my other four wives. It's the Earl of Essex's fault that you're here. He advised me to marry Anne of Cleves. Now, if I hadn't married her, I'd have never divorced her. Now, if I hadn't uh, divorced her, I'd have never married you. The Earl shall pay for this with his head. Well, I'll be hanged. You said it. 
I never wanted the Essex to fight against Scotland anyway. I'm half Scotch myself. Yeah, half Scotch and half soda. Yeah. <laughs> One more of those corny remarks, and you'll meet my executioner. <laughs> I've met him, and he's a pain in the neck. <laughs> and if you think for one moment that I'll gonna... control yourself, don't fly off your off the handle and lose your head. <laughs> Hear ye announcing the Earl of Essex, Privy Chancellor, Master of the Jewels, Clerk of the Hanukkah, Chancellor of the Exchequer, Secretary to the King, Master of the Rolls, and Collector of the Revenue. No wonder there's so many people out of work That guy's got all the jobs <laughs> How now, Essex? Why, cheerio, plum pudding Yeah uh, It's nice to see you again after a whole year My little piece of celery oh. <laughs> It's good to be back yeah. What? <laughs> oh, I say hot bird, cold bottle, warm fire, familiar faces What? Oh. I, I, I say, uh, where's Anne of Cleve? Annie doesn't live here anymore. <laughs> She's one of my ex-wives. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Do you mean you declared another ex-dividend? <laughs> Did you ever try bicarbonate? <laughs> Oh, I say, old Tomato, what do you use for a marriage license? A commutation ticket? <laughs> it may interest you to know that this year I'm getting me a brand new Essex. You mean you're changing your Earl? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I say, by Jove, you, you mean you're going to give me a quick haircut the hard way? <laughs> That's right. You, Anne of Cleves, and Catherine here. A threesome? Yes. Yeah. Oh, I say, old boy, do try and dig up a fourth, won't you? <laughs> uh, not that I really mind going, you know. Oh, I'll carry on. Chin up, white tie for dinner, spell it out for the team, and all that sort of rot. <laughs> well, really, Henry, I've been true to you. Oh, yeah? Then how come I saw you kissing the Duke of Norfolk last night? Well, I can't imagine, unless you were peeking through the window. <laughs> Oh, I say, Henry, uh, don't you think you've put enough wives away? You, you know, four of them. No, only three. I had nothing to do with Lady Jane Seymour's booting the pail. Huh? <laughs> Kicking a buck into you. <laughs> Something suspicious about Lady Jane. She died a natural death. <laughs> but my next wife, my next wife will do as I say. Oh, I say, you mean you're going to marry again? That's right. I'm going to marry Lady Catherine Parr. She'll be my sixth and last wife. History may say I didn't know what the score was when it came to marriage, but it will say I finished with Pa. Remember, friends, Avalon cigarettes give you highest quality but cost three to five cents less than other popular price brands. And they're 100% union made. And when you can get supreme quality in Avalon's for less, why pay more? So the next time, ask for Avalon. And don't forget your change. Yes, Avalon cigarettes, dear friends, cost several cents less than others. You too can save this difference like all of us Avalon brothers. Each pack is wrapped in cellophane, each pack is union made. The wonder folks from coast to coast say Avalon's lead the parade. So why not always travel on with Avalon? Yes, you'd never guess, but Avalon's cost only 10 cents plus city or state tax. Hope that you like tonight's show, friends, and we cordially invite you to be with us next Saturday evening at the same time when the Brown and Williamson Tobacco Corporation will again present Avalon Time. Dell King speaking. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Heard on the
this program, The Ladies in Love With You, from Some Like It Hot. Avalon Time has come to you from our Chicago studios. This is the National Broadcasting Company. W-E-A-F, New York, 9 p.m., B-U-L-O-V-A, Boulevard Watch Time. <laughs> 